this false doctrine that uh, angels uh, or whatever the case is had intercourse with the daughters of men. Listen, people, we got to learn how to read uh, giants. These angels came and slept with the daughters of men and produced giants. It's a fucking lie, man. People got to learn how to read, man. Like, how could an angel come down and have sex with a woman and get her pregnant to the point where she can produce giants? You got to be a fucking idiot to believe that. So you're telling me that angels produce sperm? Are you telling me that angels produce sperm? So you're telling me that angels have a D-I-C-K. That's what you're telling me. Okay. So this is polygyny is a package deal part two. Okay. So in order to understand the roots of polygyny, why it was practiced in the Old Testament under the law of Moses, and even during the kingship of King David and King Solomon, okay, we must understand why it was taken away from us, although it was our heritage, why it was taken away from us, as I always say, sin is incredibly expensive. And anytime sin is committed, there's a penalty to pay for that. Okay, as I stated in part one of this series, one of the curses in Deuteronomy 28 is that another man will lay with the wives of the children of Israel. Okay, it's talking about the transatlantic slave trade. I will talk more about that later on in this series. Okay, I want to start with the transgression of the fallen angels. Okay, in part one, I introduced Enoch, who was a scribe, and Enoch was a man of the Lord, I mentioned in the book of Jude briefly, okay, and also in Genesis chapter five. The book of Enoch is legitimate, as I expressed in part one. We're going to start from Enoch chapter 106. During the generation of Enoch, he learned about the transgression of the fallen angels. And he was explaining to Lamech, who is the son of Enoch, why Noah had a strange countenance. Okay, so let's start at verse 1, chapter 106. It says, and after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him and bore a son. And his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. Now, in Genesis 25, we see this strange countenance again with Esau. Okay, as I've stated before. The Gentiles inherited poor skin pigmentation from the sin of the fallen angels. Okay, that's where leprosy comes from. Okay, it was perversion for a fallen angel to mate with a woman. Okay, so there's an evil race of people who have a higher concentration. So some people have a higher concentration of fallen angel blood. Okay, this is why they must be born again. All men must be born again. But continuing, it says, And the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool, and his eyes beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun. And the whole house was very bright. Okay, so this is describing the appearance of a grown man. Men at one point did not come into the earth as babies. Okay, Adam did not come into the earth as a baby, obviously, because he was created directly from God, from the soil of the ground. Okay, <laughs> again, this is one of the things that sin has taken away from men. Okay, the maturation process of a man himself. Okay, then a time would come where Men would have to come into the earth as a baby. Okay, that's a generational curse. So this is a grown man that Lamech is speaking about. I'm talking about Noah. Verse 3. It says, And thereupon he rose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of righteousness. And his father, Lamech, was afraid of him and fled and came to his father Methuselah. And he said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from and unlike man, 
and resembling the sons of the God of heaven, and his nature is different, and he is not like us, and his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious, and it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels, and I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth. And now, my father, I am here to petition thee and implore thee that thou mayst go to Enoch, our father. Lamech was the grandson of Enoch. Correction. It says, and learn from him the truth, for his dwelling place is amongst the angels. Enoch was so entrusted by God. Again, Enoch is a man I described according to scripture in part one. He walked with God for 300 years, according to Genesis chapter five. Okay, so I've already established that the book of Enoch is legitimate. He was going back and forth between men and God, hearing from God, and he was also communicating with the angels. These angels who were locked up in chains of darkness for the transgression against God, the uh, rebelling against God, mating with the daughters of men. Now, I will establish also later in this series that angels are able to take on flesh. Okay, we saw this during the days of Lot. All right, the angels were able to eat food. They're able to eat food, then they have a digestive system. Okay, it's about them leaving their first estate. All right, but I'm not going to touch on that right now. Verse 8, And when Methuselah heard the words of his son, he came to me to the ends of the earth, for he had heard that I was there. And he cried aloud, and I heard his voice, and I came to him, talking about Enoch. And I said unto him, Behold, here I am, my son, wherefore hast thou come to me? Verse 9, he says, and he said, and he answered and said, because of a great cause of anxiety have I come to thee, and because of dis a disturbing vision have I approached. Verse 10, and now, my father, hear me unto Lamech, my son, there hath been born a son the like of whom there is none, and his nature is not like man's nature, and the color of his body is whiter than snow, and redder than the bloom of a rose, and the hair of his head is whiter than white wool, and his eyes are like the rays of the sun, and he opened his eyes, and thereupon lighted up the whole house. Okay, so his hair is like wool because he's also mixed with with man's seed. Okay, the original man was made in the image and likeness of God. Verse 11, and he arose in the hands of the midwife and opened his mouth and blessed the Lord of heaven. Verse 12, and his father Lamech became afraid and fled to me and did not believe that he was sprung from him, but that he was in the likeness of the angels of heaven. And behold, I have come to thee, that thou mayest make known to me the truth. Verse 13, And I, Enoch, answered and said unto him, The Lord will do a new thing on the earth. And this I have already seen in a vision and make known to thee that in the generation of my father Jerry, some of the angels of heaven transgress the word of the Lord. Verse 14, and behold, they commit sin and transgress the law and have united themselves with women and commit sin with them and have married some of them and have begot children by them you see that this is why they don't want you to know that the book of enoch is legitimate okay because it speaks directly again why is lucifer on lake row 
which is one of the questions I featured in part one. Okay, this is the reason why, one of the reasons why the fallen angels are going to be cast into the lake of fire. This is one of the reasons why demon, and this is the reason why demons have offspring from the women, the union of the fallen angels and the women. Okay, you don't get demons into the earth. How did demons get here? All right. You don't get demons in the earth without that union. Okay, verse 15. Yea, there shall come a great destruction over the whole earth, and there shall be a deluge and a great destruction for one year. Talking about the flood of Noah. Verse 16. The flood during the days of Noah. Verse 16. And this son who has been born unto you shall be left on the earth and his three children shall be saved with him when all mankind that are on the earth shall die. He and his sons shall be saved. Verse 17, and they shall produce on the earth giants, not according to the spirit, but according to the flesh. And there shall be a great punishment on the earth and the earth shall be cleansed from all impurity. So the giants came from the union of the fallen angels and the women. Verse 18, And now make known to thy son, Namek, that he who has been born is in truth his son, and call his name Noah, all right? For he shall be left to you, and he and his son shall be saved from the destruction. Okay, so, so Enoch is the one who revealed to Lamech his grandson, that this is the reason why Noah was a leper, okay? Noah was of mixed seed, okay? Noah was plagued with this fallen angel DNA, all right? But because of Noah's obedience to the Most High, God spared him, okay? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And obviously, Noah had faith. But God restarted man's genealogy with abraham okay the hebrew covenant was made through abraham because abraham's bloodline was pure enough okay so abraham because abraham was originally a chaldean okay god obviously cut a covenant with abraham made him the father of many nations and abraham became the first hebrew you see that Although Abraham is from the lineage of Shem, okay, where we get Semitic people, the Shemitic people, Abraham had a different bloodline, okay? His bloodline was, was pure. It was unadulterated, all right? Because God cut a new covenant with Abraham, making him the father of many nations. I hope you get that. So we're going to go to Enoch chapter 15 and 16. Then we're going to read chapter 19 then we're going to be done with this part two okay again i'm establishing the framework for why polygyny is a package deal because when the children of israel sojourned all right and they were led by moses the law of moses which god intentionally called it the law of moses because he knew before the foundation of the world that there would be a law of grace that's why he didn't just call it the law of God, understanding that under the law of grace, they would not be able to keep the laws of Moses. Okay. Because Paul said the law kill it. The letter of the law kill it. All right. Which I'll get to in part three. When we're talking about the law of jealousy, which I've touched on before. Okay. You're talking about laws of men who are able to commit forced entry. Okay, and make that woman his wife. Okay, all of those laws cannot be practiced. That's all a part of the package deal I'm talking about when it comes to polygyny. Why? Because God consecrated the children of Israel from all the other nations who were plagued with this demon DNA, which I'm talking about here in part two. All right, so we're establishing that framework here as well. So, Enoch chapter 15, starting at verse 1, it says, And he answered and said to me, 
and I heard his voice saying, Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness, approach hither and hear my voice. And go, say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them. You should intercede for men and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons. Verse 4, And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women. Catch that. They defiled themselves with the blood of women. So there go your the menstrual cycle. That's the monthly menstrual cycle right there. Because the fallen angels defiled themselves with the blood of women. Okay? Before Eve sinned, she did not have a menstrual cycle. All right? Continuing on. And have begotten children with the blood of flesh and as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood as those also do who die and perish therefore have i given them wives also that they might impregnate them and beget children by them that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth verse 6 but you were formerly spiritual. Catch that. Because they will say, well, the angel is a spirit. How can a spirit? No, it says here, but you were formerly spiritual. Because remember, the angels left their first estate, which was holiness. So that was their former estate. Okay, but you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore, I have not appointed wives for you, for as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, and heaven is their dwelling. Verse 8, And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men. And from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. That's where demonic spirits come from. They come from the union of the fallen angels and the women. And it says it here in Enoch chapter 15. Okay, that's where a demon is a D-man. Okay, a demon is a defiled man. Okay, but it's a disembodied spirit. So basically, these spirits came from the women. They're, they're spirits that were once giants, born from women. But when God flooded the earth, their spirits roamed the earth, even to this day. Okay, until the day of torment, which I'll talk about. Okay, chapter 16, verse 1. From the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, from the souls of whose flesh the spirits having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment. Thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation, the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated 
over the watchers and the godless. Yea, shall be wholly consummated. So it's fallen angels, demons, and those who are possessed by demons, okay, who are not born again, okay, they're bl born again, blood bought believers in Jesus Christ, okay, they're being renewed and cleansed from this fallen angel DNA. Those people are going to the lake of fire, okay? The scriptures say death, hell, and the grave is cast into the lake of fire, all right? Verse 2. And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, you have been in heaven, but all the mysteries have not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones. And these in the hardness of your hearts, you have made known to the women, and through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on the earth. So in part one, I read from Genesis chapter three, where it says that Satan, the serpent, said to the woman, for God know the day that you eat of the tree, you shall be wise and know the, the difference between good and evil, and ye shall be like God. What well, this is what this is giving a little more information. Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve had to learn godlessness from the fallen angels which I'll talk about in part three. They taught them all of these things. Okay, it says these are the mysteries. Okay, but God said these were worthless mysteries that the fallen angels knew, that they taught to men. Okay, verse four, say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Okay, this is why demons are so angry. All right, because they're tormented spirits. They they eat darkness. I meant to say this when reading from chapter 15. Demons, they don't hunger or thirst like human beings to eat food like human beings. Okay, they eat darkness. All right. Okay, so chapter 19 is three verses here. It says, And Uriel said to me, said to Enoch, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits assuming many different forms. They are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrifice unto demons as gods. Here they shall stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. Verse 3, and I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the ends of all things, and no man shall see as I have seen. See, Enoch was a real important man, okay? And they removed it from the scriptures, okay? Like Revelation chapter 22 prophesied, that those who remove from the words of this book shall receive the judgments that are written in this book, okay? So in verse 1, he said, these evil spirits, these demons, they assume many different forms and defile mankind. Okay, these are warrior kingdom spirits, marine kingdom spirits. Okay, they're called masquerade demons. When you got dreams and you're seeing a beautiful woman coming into your dream trying to have sex with you. Okay, those are succubus demons. Okay, if you saw the way that these spirits really look, okay, they have half human and like half octopus, okay, from the waist down, their, their body is deformed, okay, their body, they're mixed creatures, okay, but they have the ability to take on different forms, see, these guys don't know what they're talking about, when you have multiple sex partners because of this generational curse, uh, the fallen angels plaguing the bloodlines of men, okay, you have what I call third-party satanic soul ties. Demons, again, defile men. They defile women through their blood, okay? And God was trying to use pure vessels under the old covenant. Even with having virgin women, polygyny is a package deal. 
Okay, so those women had to be consecrated when they were on their monthly cycle. For one week, they had to be put isolated from the camp. Okay, you had to do that with every single woman in the camp. Think about that. Okay, this is why men were allowed to have multiple wives. Okay, because of the consecrations. What's the point of the consecrations? To prevent men from getting demon possessed. Again, this is why under the law of Moses, adulterers were stoned to death because they had to cast the evil spirit out of the adulterer. And Christ had yet to come and give us the keys to the kingdom, where in his name, the name of Jesus, we cast out devils. So verse, chapter 19, verse 1, talk about the sacrificing to demons as gods. All right? The, the sex is what that's talking about, and the offspring of sex. It's talking about the abortions that come afterwards, all right? Not only that, the child support as well, okay? You commit fornication, and you get paid for it. That's a sacrifice to a demon. This is stuff the pastors are not talking about, okay? Under the law of Moses, that was a, number one, that was a patriarchal kingdom, okay, which I'll talk more about in part three. Okay, so they had consecrations. They made sure that the women were holy. The women were virgins. Most of the women that were being married as multiple wives to these men were virgins. And the ones who were not virgins were concubines. But everything was documented. So let's say hypothetically, you have Margaret. Margaret is the fifth wife married to Jeremy. Okay, but Tabitha is the eighth concubine married to the household of Eric. Okay, today these Negroes have no clue what concubine belongs to who. Okay, and they can't get that marriage certificate for that second wife. They can't get that marriage license for that second wife. So basically, they're using fornication as merit to justify concubines and please the flesh. Okay, again, the whole point of the law of Moses, Moses knew about the findings of Enoch. Okay, he knew that the fallen angels married the daughters of men and their offspring was demon spirits. Okay, because in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, everything God made was good. Okay, so for, for those who want to argue with me talking about Satan can't create anything he can't produce yes he can he can corrupt and by him corrupting he's he's using the bloodlines of men to do that he's not creating his own bloodline he's corrupting the bloodlines which god created you see what i'm saying but anyway that's it for part two i'm going to get more into this this may be like a 13 to 14 part series. Okay. Again, we're digging at the roots of polygyny, why it was lawful in the old covenant, but it is not lawful today. Okay. We're talking about the corruption of the bloodlines of men. Don't let your flesh write checks. Your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. Your flesh will send you to hell and it certainly will not show up. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day.